Hello, my crafty friend, and thank you so much for joining me in today's little show and tell kind of a video where I'm sharing five very, very rare new listings that I'm adding to my Etsy shop called Art of Gems Stationery. So I called the video Treasures from a Victorian Scrapbook because to me, that's what these little things are. If you're a regular viewer of mine, you've probably heard me talk about my Victorian scrapbook in pretty much all of my journal videos at some point because I just love using genuine antique ephemera to add that touch of authenticity and time capsule quality to a journal spread. So these are pieces I haven't gotten to yet. I just wanted to kind of show you before I get into the goods that are available um, because it turned out to be so much more worky than I originally anticipated to actually get the stuff off the pages. So backstory here, I won a bid on eBay to get this Victorian scrapbook over a year ago and was inspired by journal makers like Penny and Rose and Ruby and Pearl who show Victorian calling cards and things like that in the journals they make. And yeah, I, I just thought it would be so cool to also have things from the 1870s and the 1880s. So this book was from 1877. And once I got it, I realized you can't just pull the thing off the page because you will break it. Um, a lot of the ephemera is really fragile and really brittle. And the lady who kept this scrapbook was very heavy handed when it comes to the paste. So I did some research to figure out how to separate the stuff. And I kind of felt like a paper archeologist or archivist because it really is like uncovering treasure when you finally crack the code and learn how to get the pieces out. So the way to remove stuff from a Victorian scrapbook is to first detach the page. Now, in my case, luckily this book was already crumbling. Like this whole chunk was missing even when I bought it. There were at least 15 pages taken out that I could count from like the page edges removed from the spine. Stuff had been torn out, stuff had been broken and ripped. So in that sense, I didn't feel guilty taking it apart to use for, for the pieces. Um, but it was still pretty challenging to get it done right. So you can skip this whole section. I'll put timestamps in the description if you don't care how it's done. But if like me, you've got a book like this and you want to get the pieces out, here's how you do it. You remove the page, you soak it in a tub of water. What I used as the tub was a plastic drawer from a plastic shelf of drawers that I store art supplies in. So fill it with water, soak the paper. In the case of this book, because she was so heavy handed with the glue, I had to soak it for about an hour and a half per page. When I got lucky, the pieces would start to float to the surface when they detached, but most of the times they didn't. So I had to take, what I did was I took an old gift card, like a thin plastic credit card type thing, and slid that under where I could and worked the, the pieces off the paper that way. I didn't see that in any tutorial, so you're welcome if you've been struggling with that too. Then the next step is to scrub off the glue that's on the back of, of each card. I just used my finger for that and rubbed it until, it until it all came away. Then I sandwiched it between sheets of kitchen parchment paper, so like a non-stick waxed paper, and put those between stacks of heavy books and left them for about three or four days until they were completely dry. And that way the wet ephemera pieces wouldn't curl up. So this is very time consuming. If you have the time, the space in your house or apartment and the patience for it, it's really rewarding. But if not, if you don't have, you know, hours and weeks and months to dedicate to something like this, 
I've got some some sets ready. So without further ado, here are the five sets that I'm putting up in my Etsy shop. I'll tell you, it's it's kind of hard to break up a hoarded collection like this, but I finally came to the conclusion that there was more treasure in this book than I will ever have the time to use in my own junk journal projects. And so it felt like it's time to share the wealth. So set number one is Victorian Kids. Look at this little guy. Okay, set number two, I'm calling Victorian Romance. Set number three, Victorian Ladies. Set number four, calling cards and blanks. And set number five, probably the creepiest, weirdest, craziest, kitschiest, strangest little set ever, Victorian babies in seashells. A very, very strangely specific. So I'll start by sharing these little cuties. So these were actually the pieces that I first saw on a Google search that led me to this book that made me feel like I have to have this for my crafting collection. <laughs> and I was searching antique seashell images to use in one of my mermaid themed journals, journals of yore that I made quite a while back. But yeah, there was a page covered. I'm so sorry about the glare of the sun. I'm trying to find where I can hold these so it's not so annoying. Um, but yeah, there were six of these. Sadly, they were pretty damaged. You can see where they're, they're peeling up. But they're each a little kid inside a seashell. And that poor little one is missing one of his hands. They got really scruffy, but some of them are quite nicely intact. I think this little one is my favorite. I'm sorry about the little fuzzies on it. But look at the texture. It looks painted, even though it's printed. I mean, these are the originals from the 1800s, but... So yeah, whoever compiled this scrapbook really took the time to fussy cut e each image. That one's beautifully intact. And then this one sadly has some of the, some of the details kind of torn. But yeah, what's kind of funny is that originally these were the six things in the scrapbook that I wanted the most. And ironically, I didn't wind up using them because they just didn't suit the vibe of the mermaid themed journals I made. So I thought somebody else might have some fun using these. And because of the damage on some of them, I don't think I would scan them to use as print printables just because they're not perfect images. But anyway, so set number one, babies and seashells. For the calling cards, you get a couple really pretty floral images and then a bunch of blank, cool bordered um, calling card bases. So what Victorian ladies used to do, and I thought it was so cool, my mom got me into watching The Gilded Age. I don't know if you guys have watched that, but it's worth watching just for the fashions. So what ladies would do is set appointment times where their friends could come visit them and have tea and have discussions. And if you went to visit one of your friends and it turned out she wasn't home or she wasn't available, you would leave your calling card with whoever answers the door and that way she would know you had stopped by. So calling cards were kind of like business cards, only they weren't to promote your business or to keep people aware of what you're doing or your contact details. It literally just had your name on it. And that was so that your friend would know you visited or you've come calling. And for the fancier households, the maid would answer the door or the serving person would answer the door and take the calling card from the friend who's visiting, put it on a silver platter, carry it to the lady of the house and present it. Kind of like asking, are you willing to see this friend of yours? I mean, we're pretty lucky in these days where nobody would go visit without texting first and 
calling on the cell phone, but back in the day, this was how it's done. So these two, I think, are not calling cards. They are antique advertising cards, maybe. Well, this one for sure. The white is king, one million now in use. I'm guessing that would have been something for washing, but it's just so beautiful with the illustrated roses. Ford spinning mills, so that would be an advertisement for thread or yarn or something. It's a little torn, but so pretty. Look at the napkin folded over with the flower tucked into it. So yeah, the set comes with literally all of this. Um, the two ad cards, these blanks. So for example, if you were using this in your own junk journal, you could write your name on it or print your name or stamp your name or do something, but you could use this to kind of create your own calling card. This one looks like it's an advertisement for calling cards, but with such a pretty font. Look at that old staining. Like, that's all authentic. These are all original from the Victorian time. So this was a lady's actual calling card. McKinney A. Strand. Interesting name she had. And it might have been presented blank like this, or she might have had a little bouquet of flowers or something glued to it. So if you're using these for your crafting, you can glue this down onto whichever one you want. I actually used one of these bases in one of the journals I made, but I painted it because for that particular journal, it was a butterfly theme journal. Um, I didn't want all the staining. I wanted a cleaner look, so I just painted it with white acrylic paint and it came out looking brand new again. Mrs. Emma Mo Price, or Emma M. Price. I don't think that's an O. <laughs> Sorry to the memory of Emma Price. But yeah, so cute, right? So you could either leave it as it is, or glue something over the name, or use the back side and kind of clean it up to use as your own little calling card. But these I thought were just so much fun. And you also get these ones that still have their original imagery. So the lady would put her name or her information or whatever that is underneath the image. This looks like it was a sample. I'm telling you how many you can order for what price. And in that Victorian time, anything that had a hand extended was a symbol of friendship. So just perfect for a calling card. And then I think these are my favorite ones where you would glue something like this down and it's a little tiny miniature envelope. So you could write a little mini note and tuck it into that envelope and attach that to your calling card. Or again, put the little bouquet of flowers on it. I think they're just so precious. So yeah, this set I'm calling the Victorian calling cards. Okay, so this set is called Victorian Ladies for obvious reasons. A lot of these were used as advertisements back in the day, and sadly some of them have damage on them, but I still think they're beautiful. I especially like the silvery blue tone this one's printed in. So that would look just so cool in a junk journal. But it would be hard to glue it down when the back has such a cool, like it's an advertisement for stoves and ranges. I just love the way they illustrated her pearl necklace and her braid, even the folds in the fabric on her hat. Kind of a domestic scene here with this lady trying on a new pair of shoes. Like it's too bad it was torn, but still really pretty. I think she's my favorite of the ladies because she looks so wise and beautiful and mystical. And this one kind of looks like a gypsy. This beautiful one that's cut out in an oval shape. This is actually two layers. So the scrapbook keeper cut out this image and then glued it down onto an oval base so well that even when I pulled this off the page, that paste remained gluey. It's a pretty, pretty image. 
I'm I'm such a jewelry fanatic that I always zero in on those details. Like look at her gold necklaces, her little earring. And this little one is fussy cut. I love how she's holding a rose. And she's also a little bit embossed. There's a little texture in that rose. And then this one I think is funny because she looks to me like a stern librarian or a stern school school headmistress or something but it's an advertisement for thread the best for sewing machines and at first I thought the quote was really weird and incongruous because it's just in quotation marks so do my sisters my cousins and my aunts and it took me a moment to realize on her giant thimble here it says I buy J&P Coates thread and so she buys that thread so do her sisters cousins and aunts super cute and all with a different kind of style and vibe so that set I'm calling Victorian ladies this one I'm calling Victorian romance and this little guy is so crumbling that I hope he survives the shipping I think he's just a ridiculous looking silly dude <laughs> with his bouquet of flowers and his knees bent so he could be proposing or something but just look at the look on his face and look at his nose i would love to know the story behind that character because i'm sure he must be more of a caricature than something meant to be taken seriously but look at these two young loved ones swinging in a garden it's called love's young dream super cute and it's an advertisement for shoes which I find so funny because they're both barefooted <laughs> and like you wouldn't see that in an ad for shoes today like today in an ad for shoes you'd see the freaking shoes but I thought that was so adorable so if anybody does like a junk journal or any kind of collage project with like a romantic theme I think these images would be beautiful in it. A more mature couple who are not barefooted in another advertisement for shoes. This layered card is really cool. It's quite crumbly. There's a lot of pieces that are broken off and missing, but it's a stunningly layered piece with all kinds of paper laces and trims. And in the center, it says, my heart for thine. So definitely a romantic card, a little old valentine or something. And then the last piece in the Victorian romance collection, I will tell you my paper hoarding heart really wanted to keep this, but I just wouldn't use it in anything because it's not really my style. Um, it says a valentine souvenir. It's embossed so beautifully. I actually like the inside of this paper better than the outside because you can see all the texture to that embossing. And it's just a little book of love poetry. Sewn together with a pamphlet stitch the same way I bind the junk journals I like to make. You can see that over time the color from the cover has kind of seeped through onto all the pages super super cute copyright H&M Rosenblatt and Company Chicago so even back then they branded their content <laughs> so yeah this little set I think it's the most fun because it comes with the little booklet that I mean you could even use this as a little journal and glue down for example glue this here just put the glue around the edges and turn that into a pocket tuck spot and put things there or make a belly band here out of old lace and tuck things into it like you've got a ready bound little mini book with some beautiful journaling cards this guy i kind of put in just as a joke because i think he's so funny <laughs> but i would say glue him down immediately to something use like glue that comes out of a thing like tacky glue or spray adhesive I wouldn't risk running a glue stick on him because it would probably tear his flower arm off but yeah Victorian love or Victorian romance and the last little set that I'm putting up for sale I'm calling Victorian children 
so this little guy, I put him on top because I like the scene the best. He's dressed up like a little pirate and he's playing on what looks like a box of washing powder, but so cute. I just love the details, the ruffles on his hat, the epaulettes on his shoulders. This adorable little girl, I almost kept her to put in my own journal, but again, I thought I have to kind of share the wealth here a little bit, but I love the carving of what looks like the green man, who's a Celtic god, the god of the forest or the god of nature. I don't know if that's what that actually is, but it sure looks like the green man carved into this furniture she's sitting on. And I love the stacks of books on it. So I don't know what it was an ad for. Oh, probably for coffee, Mocha, Java, and Rio. Yeah. So it's an advertisement for coffees. I would have guessed it was an ad for glasses. So again, it's just kind of funny and kitschy how Victorian ads didn't look like the thing that they're advertising. It's more just the celebration of the illustrations and the art. This little girl eating a cracker. Looks like a saltine maybe, so sweet. This little girl who reminds me maybe of a puffy haired Princess Leia. Her little white dress. This little girl, I think, or boy, Baby Stuart. That might be a royal. If anybody knows, let me know in a comment. But so cute. I think this is what they would have called a cabinet card. I may be wrong, but the embossed white frame is pretty cool. That must have been a souvenir of some sort. These two, little boy and a little girl, fussy cut. This little girl petting her lamb. I love the blue sash on her dress. The little boy violinist with his puppy dog. A little girl with her puppy dog. And it's torn a little bit, but that very cooperative puppy let her dress him up. Oh, I love the back of this one. I forgot that was there. How cool is that? The little village scene. And then the last one, the little sister comforting her little brother. So cute. Her hand is out, so I guess they're asking for something. Oh, that's a little sad, beggar kids. But it's sweet that they had each other. I'm going to pretend that they're just playing, that they're not really little beggars, that these are their play clothes and that's why they look a little scruffy. Interesting. Too bad it's, it's become damaged because of where the glue is put down so it's hard to read, but anyway, I thought they were super cute. All the little kids in the kids set. So yeah, these are the ones that I'm putting for sale, the originals. If you're a crafter like me, you know how hard it is to part with original antique things, but I'm excited that they'll have kind of a new life and somebody can use them in their craft. And then these are the ones that I just wanted to do a little show and tell because I wanted to keep them to scan them and possibly someday turn them into either a printable set or just use them in the journals I make. But look at these two girls, fairies I would guess because their dresses are flowers. <laughs> so look at the tulip dress and look at when I was a kid, before my grandparents downsized, they had a bigger house and their garden always had, I don't know what these are called, but they always had these flowers growing, some with white stripes and some with purple stripes. So I, I really love these two. This ad with what's probably an Easter egg and it's advertising diamonds and fine jewelry, which I think is super cool. A bunch of these that I would like to turn into borders for printables with different little flowers and things. I think this one's my favorite, the friendship hand with the blue flowers. This fan with a couple. That pretty lady. These two kids playing on the beach. This one is simple, 
but I absolutely love the color of blue. That really light robin's egg blue. A lot of the French documents that have like a cover page, the cover is made out of that blue color, which is just gorgeous. I'm a sucker for sea themed and ocean themed things. So anything with like a ship or an ocean theme is super cool to me. I love this lady because I'm so into fortune telling and cartomancy. So she could have been like a tarot reader of yore. I love the details on her hat and her clothing. This is hilarious. So we think or, or by we, I mean I think that little outdoor pools are a new invention, but apparently not. <laughs> little Victorian kid swimming in his pool. Mini pool, kitty pool. These little cards, I'd like to make a whole page, a whole printable page out of them. Again, in that blue and kind of a sea foamy green that I love so much. Another Victorian hand. But yeah, I guess I wanted to share these with you guys because I was so proud of myself to finally get them out of the book. Like this one was super hard to take out again because it was fully glued down. So I was proud to be able to keep all the details in the wings and things. But yeah, you might just find these used in journals that I make in the future. Look at that little envelope. But yeah, I think if anyone is interested in owning a set of these as printables, so that the, the nice thing about having things made into printables is that you can print as many copies as you want. Okay, this one is my favorite hand because I love art. And so it's an artist painting a little outdoor winterscape on a fan-shaped calling card. And I can imagine that fabric edging would have once looked new and pristine, but I love that. Really love that. Two little books. That pretty scene. It's interesting how there's coral in it, so I wonder if that symbolized something for them. But the little butterfly, the flowers, it must have been a sea theme thing because this is a seashell holding the flowers with the little coral. It reminds me of the time I spent in India. If you've ever watched my videos and wondered about my tattoo, it's a trishul, which is the symbol of Shiva and Durga, the god and the goddess of, Hin of Shaivite Hinduism. And part of the worship ceremony that you do in the temple is to offer a bouquet inside a seashell. And this really reminds me of that. I wonder if the artist was inspired can't tell because the back is blank, but I really love this. Now this has, I'm putting this in my own personal journal. I've decided just now because it reminds me of some of the fun temple times. This one I think is cool. I used it in the Halloween theme journal as a copy. It's a girl reading a ghost story by candlelight. And then on the back, it tells you, don't let your woman read a scary story at night. So it's very misogynistic and shows that back then the advertising was always geared towards men and that women were still considered inferior. So I'm not so into <laughs> what it says on the back, but I love the image. These you see me use a lot as copied images. I just love the flowers, the birds on the vases. They are incredibly fragile, like they're they're folded and damaged. Um, so I don't think I would glue the originals down onto something as tuck spots because they would be too easily broken. But I love copying them onto cardstock and using them as tuck spots. And I usually border them in gold paint when I use them. These two I use a lot in my journals. I love to copy them. Especially this one. This one had some damage to it, but this one is pristine. And there's just something so ethereal about the faded muted greens in the background, greens and grays, and then these bright pink flowers in the foreground. 
such a dreamy full moon image. And I'm a moon gazer, so I'll love anything that has the moon in it. These two little Japanese boys, one playing with marionettes, one spinning a spinning top, super cute, and they're gilded. So I used these in my Japanese themed journal. I've used her in a book. I don't remember which book anymore, but I've printed her and used her. I always check the back because sometimes they have something. This one had pencil writing, but it doesn't tell you what the image is. This one's fun. I'm probably going to get rid of the frame because it's falling apart and just doesn't look very good. But the image in the center is a fortune teller. And I just adore that as a theme. Maybe I'll take her out right now and find out. This is, I've never done this before, so I hope she comes out intact. <sighs> Good, she did. Set the frame aside. So, oh, it's a really crumbling image, but I'm so glad I took it out because there's a kitty. <laughs> I am such a cat lover. I love, love, love cats. So that just made this even more precious to me. There was also an owl hidden behind the frame. This is why I say sometimes when I uncover things from this scrapbook, I feel like a paper archeologist because those were buried for as long as this has been in this frame. And this frame also looks quite antique to me. So that would be many, many decades. But yeah, I love how she's reading the palm of the little girl. She's got her book, she's got her cards out. And it looks like she's demanding payment because the girl is holding a coin purse. Oh, cool. Yeah, the gypsy fortune teller. So I'm definitely going to scan that to use in copies and I'll probably keep the original forever because I also read tarot cards. So it reminds me of something I love to do. This little basket of flowers, it's embossed. These were fun little fairies with gilded background. He loves me. He loves me a little. He loves me not at all. How could anybody not love that cute little flower fairy? But yeah, it's just funny how quirky their things were. And it's an ad for dry goods, dress goods, black silks, colored silks. That makes sense actually, because the little fairies are dressed in silk. But how bad would you feel if you got a he loves me not at all card with the fabric that you bought? Another little valentine. I didn't put this in with the romance set because I want to use this. When it is Valentine's Day, I think I might make a little journal and use this in it. And I wanted to scan the image because I love the illustrated swans. So this is one of my favorites. I've used it already in a book that I called We Fly at Starlight that I just did a flip through for. And I just love that it's three dimensional. And the way I've used this is I printed it onto cardstock, painted with silver paint over the silvered areas. And then using an X-Acto knife, I cut out the house picture and then used it as a frame. And what was so interesting is that originally this one was damaged. Like you can see it's kind of torn a bit and it had like white guck all over it. Like it looked like somebody had spilled a bottle of whiteout or something. So it was heavily, heavily damaged and looked bad. So I soaked it the same way I would soak a page to remove the ephemera and using an old toothbrush, I actually brushed off all the white guck and it was like so exciting. It was amazing to me that it came out clean again. So sometimes when it comes to antique things, you have to work at them, but it's worth it. And then one day I think I'll make a cat themed journal. No promises as to when, but as I've said, I love cats. This image, with the little kitty looking in the mirror and the little girl. Absolutely love it. And then these are all things with cats. So the little girl with her kitten, another little girl with her kitty, and she's reading. 
a book about kitties. <laughs> like, how adorable is that? Yeah, neither of them say what they were for, but I think they were for the same thing because they're the same size and shape. And this little girl hugging a kitten with another kitten in her apron. And then this little girl with a kitty climbing up behind her chair. So, so, so cute. And it's interesting, like, there are way more images of dogs than of cats in this book. And I googled it because I, I noticed there was like such a disparity between the number of dogs and the number of cats. And I actually found out that because Queen Victoria was a dog person, not a cat person, cats were not popular in the Victorian era, which sounds a little bit culty to me that, oh, because the queen prefers dogs, now nobody loves cats. And as a cat person, I find that so ridiculous. So the kitty ephemera was especially special to me. Okay, then the last thing I wanted to share in this video, these little tags that I pulled out with domestic life scenes. I'm definitely going to make little sets of these to sell in my shop, um, printed on cardstock, because they are so cute. They show what you do or what these people did every day of the week. So this one says Monday, and they're doing the wash. Tuesday, they're doing the ironing. Wednesday, they're doing some needlework and repairs. And of course, there's a little family, whoops, the family doggy. Dogs are cute too, don't get me wrong. I just really love cats. Thursday, they're receiving their visitors. Look at how dressed up she is. They both are. I just love that. Like it's Gilded Age style dresses. This one, they're in their casual wear and you see the real difference. They have the underdress, I think it's called a bustle and the corsets and everything. Look at the hairstyles, so cool. Friday, looks like they're getting ready to go out or something, but the one staying home is washing the windows. Some kid drew all over it with pencil, which is kind of too bad, but you still get the gist of the image. Saturday, looks like they're baking cookies. And then my absolute favorite, Sunday. <laughs> the young couple who looks like they're getting a little bit too close and Granny's coming in to check on them, carrying her little lamp. And she does not look pleased to find them cuddled up on the, I think they called it a fainting chair but it's cute how the girl is pretending to ignore him. <laughs> anyway, I thought these were so adorable. So these were all glued down to a page, but originally I think they were meant to be tied with a ribbon or something and used as a little booklet. And they're all just advertising shoes, hats, and clothing, but so super cute. So yeah, let me know in a comment what you think of these Victorian treasures. And if you'd be interested in having a printable collection of some of this ephemera, the reason I'm dragging my heels on that is that I can't get my scanner to connect with my computer, which is super annoying. So that's why I've only been copying and then using them in my own journals and not scanning them to make into a printable set. So I called my local copy place to find out about having these individually scanned and the lady said they will cost a dollar sixty each to scan them so then it comes to like the decisions it's like i can't afford to have all of these things scanned because a dollar sixty each adds up when you've got like 50 pieces that's like i can't do the math in my head but that's a lot of money right just to have scanned images so for myself, for my own journal making, I don't mind just um, making color copies, just printing them out every time. But if others are interested, then I think maybe it's time to book an appointment and have them scanned. So let me know. Otherwise, if you'd like to own some of it for yourself, these collections are now available in my Etsy shop. And don't worry, they're not going to come loose in these big envelopes. I will also fill up the envelopes with 
antique book pages and canceled postage stamps and other crafty goodies. So you get the sets of Victorian things plus surprises of paper to fill up the envelope. And if you're wondering, if you look in the Etsy shop and see that the shipping price is a little bit expensive for flat paper, it's because Etsy now mandates that sellers ship everything with a tracking number. And here in Canada, it's really expensive to ship things tracked. So that's why the shipping fees are a little bit high, but I do combined shipping. So if you order multiples, you only pay one shipping fee. And if I get back from the post office and it costs less than what I've charged for shipping, I will refund the difference. But I'm pretty good now at knowing what the shipping fee costs, so it's probably exact. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I hope you had fun looking back at the Victorian era with me. Happy crafting, happy journaling, much love, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.